Let's find the force between the charge at the origin, which I'll label as charge 1, and this guy up top, which I'll label charge 3. And we know we can use Coulomb's law. So the force between charge 1 and charge 3, well, that's equal to the electrostatic constant multiplied by charge 1 value multiplied by the charge 3 value, all divided by the distance between charge 1 and 3 squared. Very good. Well, we know everything except maybe the distance. We need to find that. We'll take a line straight down, makes a right triangle, and, and therefore we can find this distance here. Well, it's a 3, 4, 5 triangle. This is point 0.3 distance, this is point 0.4 distance, this is point 0.5 distance. Excellent. Let's plug the numbers in. 9.0 times 10 to the 9th Newton meters squared over Coulomb squared. And that's multiplied by charge 1, 4 micro coulombs. A micro is a millionth. So it's 4 times 10 to the minus 6 coulombs. And then similarly for the other guy, it's minus 5 times 10 to the minus 6 coulombs here. And that's all divided by the distance squared, which is 0.5 meters squared. And you can see the units cancel. You have a meter squared here, cancels there. This guy cancels with one of these, and this guy cancels with the other. And if you multiply all this out in, in, with your calculator, you get, oops, you get 0 0.72 newtons. Excellent. Now, what about the direction? Well, opposite charges attract. Ah, by the way, that's why we have this minus sign right here, and which I should have included here. It, the minus sign indicates it's an attractive force, but the magnitude is 0.72 newtons. So, yeah, what about the direction? Well, opposite charges attract. Therefore, I know that the force vector F13 will point in that direction. And it's getting a little messy there, so let, let's draw a new triangle here. So here's the F13, and it has an X component and a Y component. The X component will label F13X, and the Y component F13Y. Excellent. Well, we can use Pythagorean theorem to solve this problem. Excuse me, we can use our knowledge of trigonometry to solve this problem for the direction. So cos theta is equal to the adjacent, F13x, divided by the hypotenuse, F13. And if I just multiply both sides by F13, cancel, cancel, I get an answer, or I get a, an isolation, I get F13. 3x is equal to F13, which we know is 0.72 newtons, multiplied by cosine theta. Ah, we also know cosine theta, because this angle here is the same as this angle there. Therefore, cosine theta is equal to the opposite over the adjacent, which, excuse me, cosine theta is equal to the adjacent, 0.3 over the hypotenuse, 0.5, and sine theta is equal to the opposite, 0.4 over the hypotenuse, 0.5. So now we can use these to plug in over there, and therefore 0.3 over 0.5, which is cosine theta here. And then we get an answer of 0.432 newtons. Now, for the y direction, we do the same thing. We use the fact that sine theta is opposite over hypotenuse. And therefore, the y direction is F13 multiplied by sine theta. And plugging in the numbers, 
we get uh, 0.72 newtons multiplied by 0.4 over 0.5, because that's what sine theta is here, and that equals 0.576 newtons. Excellent. Now we can write out F13 in vector notation, and I'll do that down here. So F13 has an X component of 0.432 newtons, and I'll give that the I hat. I hat means that it's in the X direction, plus 0.576 newtons in the J hat direction. J hat means the vertical or Y direction. Excellent. We've solved F13 and we're ready to complete the triangle.